Hey everyone, it's Ivan, keepadger.com, out here today to go over how to tune your Q adjustable gas block. For that today, we'll be using the Honey Badger SD. It's a quick overview. What are we trying to do? Well, an adjustable gas block does just that. It adjusts the amount of gas coming back into the system. So when we end up firing our weapon, bullet comes down, gas pushing it, and eventually it gets to the gas port. The gas port comes up, goes back through the gas tube, and pushes back, direct impingement, goes back into the gas key of your bolt carrier group, goes all the way back, cycles, comes back forward, so you can fire it again. Semi-automatic. Here are platforms. So what are we trying to do with that? Well, we ideally want to adjust it for a couple things. One, reliability, and two, basically smooth shooting. So the reliability portion is obviously important. We want to make sure that it's still getting enough gas into the system, that it cycles properly. And the second part of that is we can make it smoother shooting so we don't have too much gas because it also gets into the kind of wear and tear. If a gun is way over gassed and the bolt carrier group is just bouncing off every single time you pull the trigger, then undo wear and tear and you can end up breaking parts prematurely. So to that end, want to get something that is reliable as well as soft shooting. Q on their honey badgers and pretty much all their rails, there's a really handy little hole right there in the rail. You can go straight through it to adjust it. Right now I have, I believe this is their Hot Pocket by Lunar Concepts. You can find them over on Wiseman Company, covering up that port. And for the sake of just being able to see better what we're doing, I'm gonna go ahead and take this rail off and show you the gas block. As I mentioned, there's a hole drilled right through the handguard, right next to the gas block, so you can adjust it without having to remove the handguard. For the sake of showing you the gas block, I'll go ahead and remove this. So Q's attachment method for their handguards is this piece here. As it tightens, it pushes these blocks out, keeps the handguard really secure, but we need to loosen it. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this quarter inch wrench to do that. Once we remove that, we want to make sure we hang on to it. We will probably need it later, but with that other way, we can almost take this off. So with the Honey Badger SD, it actually won't clear the can. You got to remove the can first. I have it on there, hand tight. So I can go ahead and just unthread this guy. Once that's out of the way, handguard can come out, exposing our adjustable gas block. With this exposed, or if you're going straight through the rail with that hole, basically we're gonna need two different wrenches. A 5 64ths, I believe it is, and then a 0.5, a little tiny one. So inside here, there is a outside, basically like a jam nut, and that piece, want to loosen up. And what it does is it, when it goes in, it tightens up against the inner actual piece that is adjusting the gas. So inside there, 0.5, drop that guy in there. And now when we turn it clockwise, we're going to move it this way inside the gas block and it's going to pinch off the gas going back into the gas tube, restricting it. Conversely, if we end up going counterclockwise, it'll move it out this way to loosen it. So before we start making a bunch of adjustments, I'm gonna go ahead and take a shot, see what the ejection's doing, and start moving it from there. For this first round, in this case, discrete ballistics, 188 grain Cellus rounds, subsonic, I'm gonna go ahead and put one round in the magazine. This is going to tell me a couple things. One, by the ejection pattern, give me a pretty good idea if it's overgassed or undergassed. So if I need to restrict or open up that adjustable gas block some. And the other part is if it's gonna lock back on an empty magazine. So if I have a really good ejection, that's great. But if the bolt's not traveling far enough to the rear to lock back on an empty magazine, it needs more gas. So we'll go ahead and shoot this first round. Out here on the Hoth. There's a space deer out there, but I'm gonna make sure I 
do not hit it. And I'm gonna pay attention to one, the ejection, as far as with a clock, that being noon, that being three, where it throws it out, and also if it locks back on an empty chamber. So we'll break this first shot. All right, it went that way because it bounced off that tire. So locked back, that's good on that empty magazine, but went back that way probably basically south of three o'clock probably somewhere maybe even south of four so probably needs a little bit more gas as a quick aside when i looked inside the chamber after firing that first round while it did lock the bolt back it didn't lock it all the way back again indicating not enough gas especially with those subsonics so i'm going to go ahead and take this wrench drop it down make sure it's seated and if I go clockwise, I'm restricting it. So I want to go counterclockwise. Bold adjustments. I'm going to pretty much go one full turn and see where that puts me. With one full turn on that gas block, we'll go ahead and see where our ejection is and see if we lock back fully. Didn't lock back fully. I'll show you a better view in just a second. And ejection still was going a little bit back past three o'clock. So we need to open up a little more, give it a little bit more gas. As I'd mentioned, right inside there, you can see the, you can see snow, but you can see the uh, bolt basically stopped right there rather than back there. So when we hopefully give this a little more gas, it will alleviate that and give us nice ejection pattern. So get this wrench down in here. With gloves, always fun. Okay, and I'm going to back it out again. One complete rotation, bold adjustments. And right there, I actually feel it tensioning because I had backed out this jam nut only so far and it finally backed into it. So if I need to back it out even further, I'll just back that jam nut out a tiny bit so that I can move it more, but we'll try another shot. Here we go, another round subsonic. Just behind three o'clock and we actually locked back all the way right now. So again, it wasn't quite locking back all the way for us. Now fully locked back on empty magazine. Arguably, we could be done right here. I say arguably could be done, why? Well, right there I was getting what I wanted, a really soft shooting gun, ejecting just past three o'clock, and I was also getting a full bolt lock back on the empty magazine. But one, my gun's a little bit dirty, well, it's always dirty. It's definitely a little bit dirty right now, but for the sake of reliability, I'm going to go ahead and open this guy up. Basically give it again, a little bit more space so that I can then come in and open that gas block up a tiny bit more and open it about a half turn more. And now having done that again, using this guy, I'm going to go back in there and tighten that down and just basically snug it down right there. What that's gonna do is give me a little bit of extra gas on those subs. I'll explain why in just a second. As you saw, I gave it a little bit more gas before I went ahead and tightened that set screw. Why? Basically reliability. So when I choose to not clean this thing very often and it starts getting gunk in there, it starts slowing basically the bolt and everything like that, there's still enough gas in the system to reliably cycle it. Why did I tune this with subs and not supers? Well, I shoot both. And shooting subs to supers, not a big deal, but if you tune this for supers and then try and shoot subs, with those supers, you have a little bit more gas going in there, a little bit more basically power moving that, everything like that, which is fine. But when you go to put subs in, which are arguably a little underpowered comparatively, you might not have the reliability for shooting subs 
after you tune this with supers. So if you're gonna end up shooting supers and subs, make sure you go ahead and tune it with those subs. Hopefully this has been helpful in adjusting your adjustable gas block by Q. Really not much to it. You just wanna make sure you have enough gas going into the system for it to work with basically your least powered load. So if you have this on like an AR, go ahead, whatever your cheap training ammo is, adjust it to that because chances are your hotter, like defensive stuff is definitely in the cycle. So always err on the side of whatever is underpowered at the end of the day. And if you appreciate my content and want to support me directly, would greatly appreciate it. You can do so through Patreon. One, it helps support me. Two, usually get some early access to videos. And in addition to that, if you have any questions, I'm not down in the comments section, but we have a Discord set up over on Patreon. Happy to answer those questions there. And as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time. Oh,